Good morning, welcome to your post-match reaction video. Uh, we're coming live from Ibrox after a pulsating old firm derby that ended uh, Rangers 3, Celtic 3. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Johnny and Joshua who are on the gantry as we speak. Uh, where should we start with that one? Uh, certainly a game of two halves, uh, an absolutely diabolical first half showing from Rangers. Uh, kicked off in as little as 21 seconds uh, when uh, James Tavenier had uh, a bit of a, a head loss. He tried to put the ball out for a shy and it hit off uh, Maida and went into past Butland into the back of the net. Uh, Rangers really didn't get going. They had Butland to thank uh, for keeping them in the game in that first half. Bolton uh, was a judge to have uh, elbowed the ball from a Celtic cross and uh, after a VAR check, John Beaton pointed to the spot. Matt O'Reilly uh, put Celtic 2-0 up, and that's how it uh, ended at the break. Uh, Rangers came out, made a substitution at halftime. Abdallah Seema for Scott Wright and looked uh, much, much improved in that second half. Uh, got a penalty. Uh, it was a blatant penalty. We're going to, uh, we'll get your thoughts on it shortly, uh, Laz. But uh, yeah, uh, Silva initially booked for diving by John Beaton, uh, but to his credit, he was called over to VR, uh, and it was a clear. Uh, Phil by Anthony Johnston uh, and uh, the referee appointed to the spot. James Tavenier does what he normally does, which is uh, fire the ball past the goalkeeper and gave Rangers life. We all thought it was 2-2 just moments later when Serial Dessers uh, prodded the ball home uh, to delirium at Ibrox. Uh, but Tom Lawrence was a just to have uh, made a foul in the build-up after a VAR check. No problem with that whatsoever. Uh, but Rangers uh, did get that uh, equalising goal of Dallas Seaman with a deflected effort late on. Uh, however, that was uh, short-lived at those celebrations because Celtic went up the park and Adam Ida fired a strike into the near post past Jack Butland. Uh, but that was not the end of the game. Rabi Matondo would uh, step up and just as he did against Hibbs, fire an unbelievable effort, uh, cutting inside and firing past Joe Hart. And that is how it ended three apiece at Ibrox. Um, it would certainly have taken that at half time and also after Adam Ida had fired Celtic ahead again, uh, John, uh, Johnny and Joshua, uh, after Rangers had equalised. Um, where shall we begin on that one? Is it a point gained after what we witnessed in that first half, Joshua? Um, yes, it is a point gained. I think there's loads to pick through. I think um, we'll probably spend today and tomorrow and the next day kind of picking through different elements of it because there definitely is questions to ask about you know, certain Rangers performers today and the, the performance overall, what went wrong. Um, but in isolation and in, in context, when you're 2-0 down like that, when Rangers are as bad, and that is as bad as I can remember them in an old firm game for, uh, well, for, for, I think for a few seasons. That was, that was bad well, maybe, stuff. That was, yeah, I can't remember a single performance as bad Ibrox, as that. Ibrox. So you, you've obviously had comfortable wins for Celtic in this fixture in the last uh, couple of seasons. Um, so I think to come back and win 3-3, especially when Celtic go up, and when it went 3-2, had, had the game ended like that, I think it is, that, although Clement would say, look, there's still plenty to be played between now and the end of the season, you then are a number of points behind Celtic um, and you still ha you then have to go and win at Parkhead. As it materialises, Rangers had a disastrous start um, and they, they looked to have shot themselves in the foot, Derek, when it went 3-2. To then make it 3-3, especially after the celebrations, you saw how big a goal Celtic thought that was because that would have allowed them uh, to go clear at the top of the table with the game and with the, the next Old Firm game uh, to come at home for them. I think it is a bigger a, a big point for Rangers. It'll feel more significant for them, as I say, especially when you consider how bad uh, Rangers were in the first half. Because as Johnny will testify, we were sitting next one another. They were pretty bad, weren't they? They were absolutely atrocious. And Jack Butland is the guy that they should look to and thank for giving them the platform to go and do what they did in the second half. Because he made a couple of incredible saves. Derek, it's always really difficult when we're here at the ground. You get one bite of the cherry in terms of looking at things. You're tapping at your keyboard. And you don't have that certainty, but that, that save, I think it was from Matt O'Reilly, looked like an absolute an absolute worldie, an incredible one. I don't know how it looked on the on the replays and stuff, but that was a key moment because if Celtic had got uh, another goal at that point, um, the way they were playing, they were on the ascendancy and uh, they would have they been really, really difficult to stop. And I think you've got Jack to thank for that in terms of the, the, the first half. I don't know... I don't really know what happened. I've not seen that from a Clement side. Uh, perhaps it was just the jolt to the system of losing a, losing a goal after 25 seconds in such a ridiculous way. I mean, it really was comedy cut stuff. Mm. And uh, Dyson Maida, 
I mean, he's, he's done it before, Josh, isn't he? It's, this is not new, this idea of him being a energizer bunny who chases down every cause, who's always on your shoulder, who's really quick. Uh, so frustrating to see him capitalise once again on a James Tavernier error. But you have to focus on the, the mentality. That's a huge part of any old firm game. It's standing tall under enormous pressure. We know what it's like at Ibrox when things are, are not going your way. And any one of us would have been surprised if, if we'd said the game was 3-3 at half time because such was the paucity of quality and, and Rangers' performance. So that takes character, it takes leadership. I know Adam Thornton, if he's watching this, will be shaking his head and going, it's all those cliches coming out again, but they're cliches because they are true. And this Rangers side on the Clermont does have that, does have that bit between the teeth. Will we have enough to go to Parkhead? Will we have enough to face the onslaught, to face 60,000 fans on top of them, screaming for their blood? We will have to see. They'll have to play a lot better than they played today, that's for sure. But it'll be a very, very different game. Uh, Josh was looking at it and kind of hinting at me in my year after 10 minutes for, for a change because the way Rangers were set up yeah. it wasn't really designed to be chasing the game. Um, it was designed to be... Um, I'm literally having my uh, seat taken out from under me from, from down there. Sky, sky cables. Are sky cables are being yanked. Um, so uh, there's no doubt that it would have thrown them for six, and uh, and I think we saw that. But second half, I think we, most people would agree that Rangers were by far the better side. So they picked the wrong team, Joshua. That 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 first half uh, for me, they, they could have uh, substituted pretty much uh, the whole. Uh, first yeah. 11, apart from Dujon Sterling, who I thought had a great game, but um, yeah, everyone was below par in that, that first half. Did he pick the, the wrong side in hindsight, do you think, the manager? Yeah, I think you, you can simultaneously say, Derek, that that's a huge point for Rangers. And in the context of the title race, it's really significant and they showed fantastic character while still saying that they were lucky to not be more than 2-0 behind at half time. I think the team from the start probably was wrong. And there's a number of questions about individual performances. You know, I'm sure we'll get onto it. I think Connor Goldson's probably in the worst form of his Rangers career at the moment. Um, in the last few months, I don't think he looks anywhere near the player. That that why, why, was he, why was he taking off an injury time? Did he have a knock or something? I don't think so. It, it wasn't discussed. Asked. It wasn't asked at the press conference. So I think that'll yeah. be one that will be, will be discussed come Tuesday when there's a pre-Dundee yeah. press conference, but we're not sure on that. But there was, a, yeah. I mean, there, there, there was no, I think you're right, apart from Sterling, Butler made a few good saves, a lot Dio Mandy kind of was in and out of the game. Uh, you could have substituted, yeah, yeah, you could have taken off anyone in that team. Yeah. What I think went wrong is, obviously when you can see that after 30 seconds, you simultaneously give Celtic the confidence to go and play their game. You take out the tenacity of the home crowds because everyone's just shocked at what's happened. Um, and what Rangers' game plan, I think, relied on, I think it was a, a, a team pick to try and press Celtic in, in a certain way. And it worked a bit after about four minutes. Um, but apart from that, they didn't have the home crowd kind of with them building that aggressive um, momentum. They didn't have pace in the top line. So when you're looking to try and play through the press and Celtic's press was intense and you saw on a few occasions, Butlin almost got caught. There wasn't the confidence to go and play through that. So therefore, for me, Rangers didn't have a, a platform in possession because they didn't have the space to play through in midfield bar one or two different moments and, and, and the confidence wasn't really there. And, and, and then in the top line, you didn't have... Dessers wasn't holding the ball up, but nor was he able really to spin behind because there was space. There was a couple of moments that Rangers potentially had um, in the first half. They didn't have pace out wide um, to, 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 to really try and stretch the game. So I think it was just a, a mixture of a terrible start and then you've got a team that's maybe been picked... Um, with a certain game plan in mind, but also with the fact that Seema couldn't play for the entire game and, and in hindsight, yeah. it's probably the right decision to keep him to, to, to bring on uh, for the second half. It was a disastrous start. What Clement did say is, look, a few months ago, um, this team wouldn't have been able to come from 2-0 down in an old firm game. And we've seen them under Van Bronckhorst on, on more than one occasion when it's went to it's went to three and, and on one occasion yeah. it went to four. Had Jack Butler not made a, big, a couple of big saves, that could have uh, materialised in the first half, Derek. But there was changes, not not least at Dalsima in the second half. And I think in particular when Campbell and Matondo came on, injected a little bit more quality on the ball. Because for the positives of the point, there was a lot within that Rangers performance that was uh, really poor. And, and if they are to win this league, and they'll need to, to get something probably at Parkhead and they'll to drop points elsewhere, they'll need to be so much better on the ball than they were today. Well, uh, yeah. I've got a bit of a controversial take on that, Josh. Uh, I suspect. Character. <laughs> I suspect Celtic will drop points in the league. Uh, 
I, th I think they've got it in them, yeah. and they've got it in them more than Rangers. Ironically, the thing that caused Rangers so many problems under Postecoglou was that they had a manager that kind of didn't set up in a way that was great to take on the, the lesser lights of the league. And I think the, the tables have turned. I think the way Clement is um, setting up Rangers now, it, it's designed and it works very, very well against the other teams. While I think Brendan Rodgers is a more naturally reactive manager, um, thinks about the opposition and it, it's maybe not as gung-ho. It's about control and possession. So I could see Rangers losing at Parkhead, for example, and still winning this league, uh, genuinely. But obviously, if they can get the point, if they can go there and, and perform well, and it will be a very, very different game because Rangers will be able to play properly on the counter-attack, then, then I, I don't see why they can't do that. But it will be very, very difficult. I yeah. think what we've seen today is you need pace to hurt Celtic. When Rangers injected pace into the side in the second half, they hurt them. In the first half, they didn't. There were so many opportunities to get in behind that they didn't take because Fabio Silva's not slow, but he's not any quicker really than Greg Taylor. I think you could say Scott Wright, while he's a he's a fairly fast player, I don't think he's lightning. Seema, on the other hand, is an absolute oh, big difference. Runner. You know, he's, yeah. he's lightning. Yeah. So I think if you go to Parkhead and you've got Matondo on one wing, you've got Seema on the other. However you decide to use the, the, the pace that Rangers have, I can see them being more threatening in that regard because you won't have to kind of fill up with players that, that with the expectation that you're going to be on the front there's, foot. There's still a lot of round pegs and square holes today on the wings and, yeah. and you still will wins that penalty. Um, th th I thought a lot of the selection calls just didn't come off. Lawrence didn't have a good game. Campbell improved that, that area of the pitch for me mm -hmm. um, when he came on. And, and But more beyond anything, Derek, I think that Dujon Sterling before the break was the only Rangers player winning duels of any description. I know he may, maybe he could do better for the third goal, but the second goal comes from Sterling actually being aggressive and winning the ball back. I think in its simplest form today, when Rangers were not on top, it was because Celtic had more composure on the ball. They had more composure to play through a press that was less aggressive. It was trying to trap them instead of Celtic's press, which was just running at them and asking Goldson and Suter and Butlin difficult questions. And they didn't have players winning duels like, like Sterling was in the first half and did for the entirety of the 90 minutes. And Seema coming on, getting the break with a penalty. And you've got to give Silva uh, credit, I think, for winning that as well. That allowed them to turn the game. You you wondered for a while, have they lost their chance to, 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 to grab the momentum? But I agree with what Johnny's saying. Celtic, I think... When you watch these games and when you think Celtic have areas of weakness, it's when Rangers are aggressive. So I think the frustration will have been Rangers sat off in whatever capacity and whatever that means. They were not aggressive enough um, on and off the ball with their approach before the game. Sorry, in the first half, it was only when they started to apply that pressure um, that, that the game started to turn somewhat in the second half. Yeah, uh, just on Fabio Silva, I know you've got a bit of stick online, Johnny, with your uh, player rating on uh, Silva. You gave him a six. Simon Williamson uh, says, uh, someone needs a word with Silva. We're not about that great spirit to come back, meaning about the, obviously, the theatrics in the first half. I've got to say, I didn't wasn't a big fan of that either. I don't think, uh, don't like to really see that, to be honest. I thought he was much improved in the second half, Fabio Silva. Um, but like you say, Joshua, it's pretty much um, the square pegs and, and round holes at this moment in time. He's... Uh, I want to see more from him. He did well to win that penalty, but uh, he, he's came with a, a big price tag, of course. I think Rangers uh, should see more from him, but we're not quite getting it at the moment. But, Johnny, um, explain your, your six for Silva. For me, he's much improved, like much of the team, but I, I was surprised to see him come out for the second half because I thought he'd get hooked. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he was much better. Yeah, I think he was probably overall a five performance, but he chops inside Alistair Johnson and gets past him brilliantly and wins the penalty, so that takes him up to a six. It's like Tavernier's performance. I think I gave Tavernier a five, but he would have been on a four had it not been for the penalty. You know, I don't think Tavernier had his best game by any means. Although, like almost everyone in the Rangers squad, there was a significant improvement in the second half, and you saw, uh, I think, a pretty brave performance given the guy had such a, a horror show against Maida in that first half an hour we are he was really getting torched uh, time and time again but yeah. he got on top of it and managed to 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 improve his overall performance and Maida was was a, a diminished threat as the game wore on I think it's, it's safe to say Josh but listen Derek I mean match ratings they're 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 that's quite hard because don't pin your hopes on them. Yeah, yeah don't yeah. pin your hopes on them. Yeah. Exactly. That's a, that's a fair point. Yeah. 
Yeah. What do you make of the... the, the, the I thought John Beaton had a decent game. Uh, I, I think uh, Carter Vickers perhaps uh, fortunate to escape a yellow early on. And uh, I've seen a few people saying that uh, Alistair Johnson should have got a second yellow for uh, the foul on Silva, which I get. Um, however, apart from that, uh, I thought he had a, a decent game. I don't think we'll be talking about officiating for days and weeks oh, afterwards. How um, naive you are, son. Come on. Well, I don't get why. Why is he coming for criticism? I don't. I don't understand why he's coming in for a bit of stick here. Because what you have with the penalty there is one that if it's against your team, you want it. But it's and a clear foul. It's, surely. Simple, it's as simple as that. Well, I mean, I get that, the goal. The one's harsh, but it's a penalty. I mean, it's yeah. that's, that's the rules. But, but with the Fabio Silva one, way. it's one of those where you, not all contact equals penalty, and it's debatable. Now, I think it's a penalty. I think there's enough yeah. penalty, there's enough Clumsy. contact there. I mean, you watch it, especially at full speed. It seems yeah. obvious it's a penalty. When I, I watched it, I said to Josh a million times, he's probably bored to listen to me, that's a penalty, that's a penalty. And um, I, I do think it was a penalty, but it's one of those ones, Derek, if you're a Celtic fan, you're, you're, you're never accepting that as a penalty. Just like many Rangers fans, if the boot was on the left foot, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's a debatable one that's marginal, that's that's kind of down the middle. Now, I would say it's 55, 45, or 60, 40, or whatever. So I can understand why there's debate about it. And and in Scotland, with the hysteria that there is around referees, and the hysteria yeah, that there has been about John Beaton on the back of um, the, the comments that were made after the Hearts game by Brendan Rodgers, yeah. it's always going to extend itself to what will be a, a, a two- or three-day news cycle with people talking about this. And... That's just the way it is up here in Scotland. You know, there's 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 a, a market for it. People eat it up. If they didn't eat it up, then unfortunately, then for, it would be uh, significantly better for us because we wouldn't have to be talking about referees. I thought John Beaton was absolutely fine today. I thought he sailed yeah. through the game. I think he, he made the big calls correctly. As you say about the Goldson pe- penalty, it, it is. It's, he's got his arm it's out. Tough, and it is. Yeah. Clement said it after the game. He said it is a penalty, but it's one that everyone in the game doesn't want to see being given as a penalty. Yeah. Um, but for this to become a thing where it's about the conspiracy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's just nonsense. It's just nonsense. There's there's tons yeah. to talk about in that game. It's a three-three game. It went from end to end. It, there was a seesaw element to it, and there was there was absolutely tons to talk about. So yeah. to get caught up in the whole referee and nonsense that's, that goes on, um, I just think yeah. is to, well. To, to, you know. Yeah, yeah. The ma- the manager was asked about uh, shot corner. Brendan Rogers was unhappy with a penalty award, and he says, uh, "What was your view on that?" I think if someone kicks your knee, then if that's not a penalty anymore, then uh, but everybody can have his opinion. I think the referee in the VAR did a really good job today, although I was disappointed at not getting the Dessers goal for a small foul in our half with that, and then this penalty. I think we had much more reason to be unhappy about things, but we're not because the referee in VAR did a good job today, and if that's the case, we need to say it. You can read everything the manager had to say over on the Rangers Review website, folks. You can also watch his press conference and Rabbi Matondo's and even Brendan Rogers' press conference over on the YouTube uh, channel as well. Uh, Rabbi Matondo then, Joshua, uh, just like he did last week, absolutely stunning goal. Uh, you knew as soon as he pulled, I, I, was, I was itching for him to do that just moments prior um, to get that opportunity because he's got such a, a sweet finish on him. Uh, no goalkeeper is saving that. A, a super goal. Yeah, yeah, fantastic finish um, and really a nice story behind it. Uh, Clement, sorry, Matondo was speaking after the game and he said that Clement had spoke to him before the game or, or maybe it was yesterday about the Kevin De Bruyne goal you will have seen in the Man City Crystal Palace game. Uh, Clement has been encouraging him to try and hit the, the, the bottom corner instead of the top corner all the time and Matondo said the reason he ran over was, I guess, in, in, in response to that. Um, but a nice shows a, a nice bit of the dynamic between the player and the manager there asked Clement about it post-match and, and in short he said listen one of Matondo's issue has been that he didn't shoot enough and he, when he got into certain positions he did not have end product we saw this at the start of the season we spoke in the the, the pre-match podcast Derek about the, the fact that Matondo is a good sub so much more dynamic off the left because that's what he can do when he's cutting inside on his right foot He's not effective. He's he's not got his, his outside leg to protect him. Um, he it's much easier to get the ball off him. It's less natural when he's in that position. Um, when he's in the left half space up against a, a fullback, he can always seem to get space. And it's it is a top top quality finish. Um, I actually I, I, when it when it was when it was airbound, you kind of thought 
it, it looked good kind of from the start, um, mm. but it was such a it was such a out, kind of outrageous position to try it from. You didn't think that it would go in, but yeah, a moment of real quality. I think it speaks to a player who's in co- in, in a confident vein of form, even if he's been out injured um, for a long time. And again, another player who seems to be better under Clement, and it's a huge goal because if Rangers were to have lost that game three two, I think that the the, the celebration Celtic had after that third goal, Johnny, which was just below us, they, they, that that would have been so significant for them if they had left um, yeah. here today with a, with a victory in that manner. Given how poor Rangers were for large stretches, I think they were better in the second half, um, definitely, and they had, they, they, they had other opportunities. But to get that moment in a game where Rangers were void of quality on the ball and kind of void of incision on the ball for a lot of the game, it was just a moment of someone taking control and when they needed to do so. And uh, yeah, ultimately gets the, the, the point for Rangers in the end. It was a scrappy game, fundamentally. It, there was. wasn't a lot of real quality on show. It was entertaining as anything, but <laughs> yeah. at the same time, if you're watching Manchester United, Liverpool now, I'm, I'm assuming that the quality is a little bit better. It was very much blood and snotters out there. And that was the one moment where you thought, right, that's a football player. That is a, that's a magic moment. Uh, the rest of it, you look at the goals, their, their errors, their deflections, their penalties, their... In the case of Adam Ida, it's a good finish, but the defending is awful. So yeah. this was the one moment that sort of lit up the game, and Robbie Matondo deserves so much, so much praise because it's a highly, highly charged moment to say the least. Yes. Um, I, I think yeah. one of the other interesting things is Josh mentioned the Celtic celebrations. Don't know if you would have seen them on TV. I mean, they literally spilled out of the technical area. Well, the manager involved. was involved as well. What? Yeah, everyone was jumping on each other, weren't they? They, so. they, they were celebrating. Uh, crazily, and yeah. as you would expect, it's a late old firm goal 3 2. But just as I felt about watching Rangers lose um, a goal after going to 2 2 so quickly and then it going to 3 2, I felt like Rangers, you know, you're, you're, you're creating a, a real error for yourself, you know, by, by losing concentration so quickly after getting the momentum in your way. And I think Celtic did exactly the same thing, and it, it speaks to this, this title race that is just seesawing all the way. Yeah. And I think part of this is going to be the team that is able to just get over the line with, with the mentality to keep going. And, and the good news is Rangers did that today so emphatically. To go down 2-0 at half time, Ibrox is booing. Everyone mm. is saying it's one of the worst performances they've seen in years from yep. the team. It's certainly the worst performance of the Clement era. And then to, to get it back to 2-2. But not only that, Derek, they lose a goal and go 3-2 and then they get it back again. Yeah. It really does show that that mentality, and, and I yeah. think that's important. It is important. Yeah, I think the point the point is for me, Derek, is that Clement has a lot of work to do in games like this, and how Rangers control games, and you know what they do in possession and certain individual performances. The quality clearly needs to go up, but he, he can he can only really correct that with time and transfer uh, transfer markets. What well, do- there is one way you can correct it without going to the transfer market, which is bringing these players back from injury. Yeah, if Danilo yeah. can come back, yeah, we yeah. don't know about Cortez. I mean, certainly you're going to get more for Sima. Yeah, no, that's Sima's... Kieran Dill came on. I mean, Kieran Dill yeah. came on. Well, that was excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he should. I think he he, he, on, he created a good chance. He yeah. he kind of jogged back for the goal, which is yeah, yeah. Uh, it's always a temptation that you say a player should commit a, a cynical foul in that situation. But mm. yeah. what I was what I was going to say is that the one thing that I think is pretty undeniable is that mentality point. He spoke mm. about it in the lead up. Uh, he spoke about it last week, Derek. There is no chance in recent years um, that Rangers come back from 2-0 down in an old-firm game at home. They don't. It, it, we, again, we've seen it at Parkhead where the game has just got away from them and the heads, heads have completely gone. That is, I think, the, the big positive point from a Rangers point of view uh, today and what they'll reflect on. Tons and tons of stuff to improve. Um, big questions about certain players going forward that I think were heightened today because Rangers have still only won one old-firm in the last 10. Mm. However, what is pretty inarguable is that Rangers don't come back. We've seen them score goals repeatedly after going after being pegged back at home in recent weeks. If you think of the Ross County game, if you think of Hibs last week, this was a bigger moment to do it in. Um, and I think that is something that Clement has talked about quite consistently, which you can't really argue with. The, the mentality feels like it has changed, even if there's a lot, uh, a long way to go for, for that team to, to look like Clement wanted to consistently in this fixture. 
Yep. Uh, there was an interesting spectator in the crowd today. Uh, Gareth Southgate was in there. Robert Burns says, what did Southgate make of Butland struggle with the ball at his feet? I think you'd be pretty satisfied with uh, Butland's uh, performance, uh, I've got to say. Uh, like you say, Johnny, a big saves, and especially in that uh, first half to keep Rangers uh, in the game. I said this before, I think he's well deserving of uh, a call up to the England squad. But there were a few interesting spectators. I've seen Gordon Ramsay at the game. Billy Gilmore was up there in the stand as well, uh, watching on how Rangers could have done with him uh, in the middle of uh, the park. But uh, yeah, a draw is how it ended uh, at Ibrox. Uh, on to Wednesday now then, Johnny. Uh, up on that uh, plough field that is Dens Park. Uh, it was uh, a scene at uh, the game against Motherwell getting put on yesterday. Um, should we be concerned about the playing surface up there when Rangers uh, head up to Dens on Wednesday? Yeah, absolutely. I had a look at the Met Office weather report and uh, heavy rain uh, tomorrow. Raining every day. So I think it's been raining up in Dundee today. Certainly it was forecast to be heavy rain tomorrow and then rain on Tuesday and rain on Wednesday. And by all accounts, as the, the day goes on, the rain gets worse. So mm. I think in the morning there's maybe not much. It's like light showers or whatever. But as the day goes on, which obviously if you were to make a, a call on Tuesday and then there's more rain uh, Wednesday morning, things start to look bad. And then it's that whole thing with Dundee of, right, we're working on the pitch, you know, touch yeah. and go all the way up to to the evening. Rangers won't want that again. They've already had it once going up there this season. Uh, I think the SPFL really have to get a grip of this and this sort of thing. There has to be a base standard. And if you're not meeting it, I think clubs should be fined. Dundee have had four games postponed. That's just unacceptable. There's just no reason for that. Um, it's unfair on other clubs. Motherwell, who they played at the weekend, have done a a fantastic amount of work on their pitch over the years. We all remember Motherwell being a, a problem Sandpit. pitch yeah. season after season after season. They've put investment in, I think yeah. it's a million pounds or something like that, they've put in the pitch over the last period of time, and now they've got a fantastic pitch. I think Dundee, I know they're moving to a new stadium, to be fair to them, and they won't be wanting to put mega bucks behind Dens Park, which is obviously a bit ramshackle to say the least nowadays. But still, there is base standards that, that need to be met by the SPFL uh, clubs, and, and, and I don't think Dundee have been meeting them. Certainly, I was very, very heavily keeping an eye on it yesterday, Derek, watching a lot of video yeah. that was coming out from the journalists at the, the game, and it just did not look particularly playable. Uh, certainly before the game, there's big yellow patches on the pitch where <laughs> the discoloration has come from the volume of sand they've had to put down. Yeah. To get it, um, to get it in remotely playable, and I just don't think that's acceptable in elite football when league titles are to yeah. be are there to be won. So I think it's going to be a very, very big few days for Rangers on a political front. I think they'll be wanting to fight this one um, quite strongly. If there's any suggestion that Dundee's pitch hasn't massively improved, ah. Uh, I am a, I come from that area, so I know how close McDermott Park is, for example, Derek. I don't know what the state of that is, but if you're looking for an alternative... Look how close not, Tanadice is. Yeah, well, I mean, Tanadice, I think, is, would be difficult from a from a VAR point of view, from what yeah, I've read. I and they're, they're not set up for VAR there. Yeah. Obviously, there's, a, there's the sort of uh, the, the club rivalry point of view with Dundee United want Dundee fans coming in, you know, without having the time to consider the but even, even with, elements of that. Yeah, Brecon City, Montrose, Forfar, I'm sure these clubs have got decent pitches that you could play on. Well, it, it, there's, there's myriad options, Derek, and yeah. uh, you know they, they need to be forced to consider one of them if they can't meet basic standards, is what I would say. It can't yeah. be another situation. Listen, it's all very well for us to talk about it from a football perspective, but there's, a, there's actually a bigger thing at play here, which is fans who pay their hard-earned yeah. money, not just on the, the tickets, by the way, which are, which are massively expensive, but the travel, the food, the beer, you know, it's an expensive day out. And to have that ruined because the governing body doesn't have his ducks in a row in terms of making mm. sure these clubs are, have their feet held to the fire and are, are, are forced to have a basic standard in, in place that, that, that forces them to get these games on because they have to put in the investment to ensure that, I think it's, it's, it's a bad situation. And I, and I certainly hope we're not going to have one of these situations where Rangers fans are going up there, you know, from all over. I mean, know they go from all over the UK, uh, leaving their houses, not knowing whether the game's going to be on or not. That's just a, yeah. that's a shambles, and it can't be allowed to continue. 
Yeah, and, and we know a lot of Rangers fans travel from far flung places to uh, uh, the team. Good to have uh, Big Phil tuning in. Uh, he says, uh, if it's done today, well, let's do it at Ibrox uh, or the forfeit. Absolutely, uh, Big Phil. Uh, I've said that before. Uh, get it at Unsurprising, uh, Mr. Clement feels that way, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> he always he tunes in all the time, yeah, Johnny. Yeah, give, give them the home dressing room, give them their, their home allocation, uh, and uh, yeah, have it at Ibrooks. That's what I say. But uh, yeah, one to keep an eye on, certainly, as we look ahead to uh, Wednesday evening uh, in that game. Or we can play the, the Dundee car park, as uh, Clement said uh, previously when Rangers were up there and won 5 0. Uh, right, folks, I think that will wrap up there. Uh, huge thanks to uh, Johnny and to Joshua. Uh, for their help uh, with this video and huge thanks to each and every one of you for interacting with the show. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow to dissect it in more detail. Uh, I think I'll be on with uh, Chris, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we hope you can join us uh, for that. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll let you go. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. The late <coughs> is still very much on Rangers, of course. We'll be looking to uh, head back to the summit on Wednesday. Bye for now. <laughs>